What's up guys? Welcome to your 18th Java tutorial. Again with me Travis. What we're going to learn about in today's tutorial is one of my favorite things of doing when coding. It's called the switching case. I don't know why I like it so much. It's just one of those things. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to delete out most of this stuff here and uh, leave it. We're going to call this int gun instead of dice because what we're going to create is a Russian roulette game which is no game for sissies, but uh, it's a game for idiots. So that's what we're just going to do a program for it instead of doing it in real life. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an int called gun, a random called r, and then we're just going to set gun equal to be a random dot um, next int. And there's six chambers in a gun, so we're just going to do six, and then we're just going to add one again so it cycles through one through six instead of uh, zero through five. Or actually, let's just not do this plus one because we won't really need it. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to set up a switch. And what a switch allows us to do is uh, give it a parameter that we're looking for, such as gun. And actually, gun needs to be in parentheses here. And then we're going to add some brackets. And here are different cases. So we can say case zero um, because we took out that plus one. We're going to do a break statement here. And I'll explain what these all are here in a second, um, but this is kind of the format of the switching case. Um, as you can see here, after our case, we have a semicolon, and or I'm sorry, just a regular colon. I'm just going to copy and paste this so we have, um, you know, six different options. And Control Shift F will format everything for you. If you guys ever uh, you need to format your code so you don't get lost there. Um, and then we're just going to change these cases to 2, 3, uh, 4, and lastly 5. So we have six different options. And now what we can do is just some system printouts if we want. Or system out print. Jeez, I'm terrible with that. And uh, we're just going to say you're safe. And we'll have, uh, you know, kind of this same print statement for all these, except for chamber three. Chamber three is going to be the bang, you're dead. So you don't want to get uh, chamber three. So there we go. And, you know, obviously we could have just done an if statement if, you know, our gun is equal to three, we system print out this else we print out something like this. When a switching case comes in handy is when you don't want to have all these options the same like you got lucky sucker sucker and uh, you know stuff like that so we can say close one and uh, you know whatever. So right now you're probably still a little bit confused about the switching case if you guys are just uh, just learning here, but that's fine. So uh, there we go. Um, now let's explain this. Explain what's going on with the switching case. Or first let's test it, make sure it r works. Um, as you can see right here we got case five. So uh, you know, bang, you're dead. Three rounds and you're pretty much a goner. So now let's explain what's going on here. Uh, again, we just set up a random int uh, that's going to be cycling through 0 uh, through 5. And then what we do is we set up our switch, giving it some information to look for within these parentheses here. So what it's looking for is our int value. Then we set up cases. Uh, basically, the cases are going to check if it's equal to whatever this parameter is here or this, or this value up here, this int value. Um, and so if we do get a matching case, such as if gun was equal to zero, it hit this case right here and say, okay, we're going to print this out, and then it's going to break through our switch. Um, because we didn't have that break statement, what it would do is it'd say gun is equal to zero, oh yeah, case zero here, and then it's still going to check if check all these other cases. Um, it'll be like, is it equal to one? It'll be like, uh, no, we already said it's equal to zero. Is it equal to two? No, you idiot, it's equal to zero and then it'll go through all these other cases. But if we add this break statement right here, 
what it's going to do is it's going to be like, okay, I found the case, I print it out to the screen, and just break out of the switch. So it's going to jump out of our switch bracket right here. Um, let me get a little closer there. So that's kind of how the switching case works. Now, some of you guys might be thinking, what about just like an if else statement? Um, we could just say if gun is equal to be zero, uh, system printout, whatever, else if gun is equal to be one, system printout, you know, whatever else. Um, and you could do that, that'd be fine. But uh, the beauty of this is we have the break statement and we don't have to type gun every time. We don't have to say if gun is equal to one, if gun is equal to two, uh, you know, stuff like that. So this switch allows us just to give us the value that we're looking for. So you can think of gun as kind of the, the question and then these are all the answers. And it's gonna cycle through all these answers until it finds one that matches. And then we're just gonna print out and then break. Now the analogy isn't, uh, you know, perfect because, you know, we want our question and our answer to equal each other. So you don't usually say how many calories are in a cup of milk, and then your case would be how many calories are in a cup of milk. That's not a very good answer, but you want them to match, and that's kind of how the switching case works. So however you guys want to think of that, you know, there you go. Uh, thanks again for watching, and be safe. Don't play real Russian roulette. Just create a program, play it on there. So see you guys later, and have a good one.